everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel. Uh, welcome to another live stream. And today is uh, September 3rd, 2019. And uh, we're doing a live stream uh, on personal finance, investing, right? And uh, we're doing it on our patio. Okay. We've uh, harvested a fair bit of. Uh, herbs greens uh, some grapes a couple of cucumbers tomato or two a little uh, watermelon cucumber as well i should bring that and show you guys how big it is let me go grab it and bring it to you guys let me show you how big our little watermelon cucumber is hopefully we didn't eat it okay i'll be right back Check this out. Check this out. This is our one and only water watermelon cucumber that we harvested. <laughs> Isn't this like the cutest little thing you've ever seen in your life? Look at this thing. As far as veggies go anyway. See if they'll focus. Right? Super cool. Super cute. Uh, we're gonna try to grow more of these next year and see if they how big they grow <laughs> got a feeling they gotta grow bigger than this but if they grow this big this would be amazing as a little ornament on some uh, vodka watermelon liqueur or something right super cool super cool, super cool. we might get some outside noises today because uh well, we're outside in the patio. Okay, let me pop up the chat. And uh, basically, we're gonna see how many people we get popping in. And where the discussion takes us. Mask of Raven, how are you doing? Hope you're enjoying the last little stint of summer we're getting, right? That's what we're trying to do. Come out in the patio and spend time with the with the flowers and the shrubbery. ZW money, how are you doing? What does ZW stand for? You're on the you're on the right stream, I guess. If we're talking about money, personal finance. Here's some snacks. I got some uh, raspberries, right? Strawberries. And these are the grapes we harvested off this thing, this vine, right? We have to take it down. We found out today it wasn't just a big fat squirrel that was eating all the... It was taking, not all of them, but started munching on our grapes. It was also a squirrel, uh, it was also a raccoon that was coming up here. I caught him this morning. I, I came to take a picture, but he was, he was already gone. He'll come back again. Raccoons come back. When they smell food, they'll be back. ZW is my initials. Ah, nice. ZW money. And you are money, by the way, right? Everything is money. Hello again. Always glad to catch another stream. Lonely Piggy, how are you doing? Glad to have you. University tomorrow. Enjoying my last day of summer with my real uh, anal an analysis textbook. Real... Uh, discrete numbers mathematics real analysis or is this just straight up uh, statistics statistics is powerful like any any type of mathematics any type of course you can take where you're analyzing big data and you get an appreciation for what you can do with big data I don't care if you're entering it from the field of sociology whatever it might be to uh, business to anything right Take that course. Important to take that course. It's all about data right now. And it will be for a very long time to come. 
Hey, hey, enjoying the last few warm days outside. Touching Jason. Yes, yes, we are. For sure. For sure. And we still have, like, this thing blooms all year. Like, gives flowers all year. And we have some other things that are giving flowers and stuff. We got no more veggies or fruits growing. I am money as well as a resource. 100%. Right? As well as a commodity based on certain institutions. Right? As well as cannon fodder depending on your personal choices. Right? As well as the situation you're in. Data analysis is huge, I believe. Huge, 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 huge. When does it start getting cold in Canada? I have friends in Montreal who say it's it's already starting to get a bit chilly. Uh, the temperature is dropping. So September, if we're lucky in Canada, we get an extended summer, right? But by October, you're gonna start seeing rain, probably mid mid September, end of September, and then we once once the rainy season starts in Vancouver anyway, you got rain for three, four, five months, right? rest of canada once the snow season starts you got snow for three four five months <laughs> data analysis uh, da, da, da. Uh, real analysis is like calculus but more detailed is it okay cool i don't I've, i don't think i've ever taken uh, any courses with real analysis uh, i can't remember anyway it's been so long right this is detail and nitpicky doing stuff like rigorously defining the reels oh my god it's like proofs it's like uh, boolean yeah this that this 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 that 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 da. proven spider beans how are you doing welcome welcome hope you're having a fine fine day getting ready for work but it will be listening in awesome awesome hope you have a nice chill transition into work index welcome how's life interest rates are going down <laughs> hey i had a question i had someone ask me a question a family member sent me the following questions should i read them and we try to discuss them analyze them try to get our opinions because i might have an opinion about something and you guys might have an opinion about other things heavily emphasizes proof yes yeah that any math proof courses I had to, I had to take. I try to stay away from. Uh, by the way, here's our playlist for personal finance for anyone, and I'll link this into this um, in the description of the videos once we uh, load this on to BitChute and YouTube for now and possibly other places. Okay, here's the questions that were sent to me actually like 45 minutes ago. Okay, from a family member. And I told them to pop on here, but I, I don't think they can. They're, they're at work, so they won't be able to. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, they won't be able to uh, tune in, right? But let me read you his quick little email, right? So, uh, hey, Chicho, I am wondering what you think about some economic developments. I just... I hope he's okay with me reading this. <laughs> he's okay, he's family, I know. Right? I just sold some of my options for a nice profit, but it does, uh, it was close to expiry. There were mining stocks. I'm wondering if there will be a pullback or is this going to be a completely bearish September and October? I guess it depends on the economic news coming out. What do you think about these? So, specifically, right? Um, he's got four questions that four things that he's picked that might influence uh, based on what he's doing might influence the markets uh, for him right so here's the things that he asked I'm just gonna wait until the plane flies over again we're gonna get ambient noise hopefully we won't get any gardening stuff people like suburbs was crazy all of a sudden you get a mass my you know two trucks come in and six people jump out with lawnmower equipment and trimming hedges and stuff and they go for like half an hour 45 minutes in the suburb you get noise level just kick up and then it dies down again, right so here are the questions that he wants no right 
Brexit hard or soft or delay? So first question is about Brexit. Is it going to be hard, soft or delay? Trump, China, trade, hope uh, per reduction of tariffs, right? So the second question is regarding what's going to happen with the United States, China, and the trade wars that are taking place, the tariffs taking place, right? Fed cutting rates on September 19th, they say 100% chance of at least 25 basis points, 25.25%, which is one basis point, right? Cut. Oh, for that one, it's easy. 100% they're going to kick down one basis point, possibly two basis points, 50.5%, right? I don't think so. I think they're going to go by 25, right? Italy and Germany economy get worse or per better uh, sometime this month or the politics going far right will be good for the metals. Okay. So that fourth question, let me read that again. All right. Italy and Germany economy get worse or better sometime this month or the politics going uh, or the politics going far right will be good for metals right and metals is a hedge against um, basically uh, it's a safe haven that people flock to because metals have been beaten down for the last few years right and they're starting to make a move gold is making a move right so it's things are going towards a safe haven right so the question really is is Italy and Germany economy going to get worse or better in the next month or two and what where is money going to go depending on what happens right all those factors and the last little sentence he has he says all those factors will be big for pullbacks in the metal metals prices specifically if the fed doesn't cut rates september 19th i know it's tough to say for sure but what do you think about these situations i'd like to get some more input okay let me read the chat let me see if there's anybody had any comments I would love to get into options trading a bit twitching Jason says a bit more I started learning about it years ago and started tinkering but never really dove too deep yeah the only way to get into options trading is you got to get it into it right and with almost anything that you're initially learning you're gonna get burned a little bit just make sure you uh, reduce your uh, chance taking right don't have much knowledge on global economics but isn't outsourcing to China in general a big thing any enlightening uh, would be appreciated uh, just in regards to China there's right now there are, it, outsourcing to China has been going on since in a big way it started off snowballing in the 1990s uh, towards the end of 1990s it, it was huge in the 2000s it was gigantic and we're seeing the tape you know coming down of it a little bit because of these tariff wars so a lot of stuff is coming out of China right now not as much as they have like huge China's growth is huge right if you take the book value on it but what's happening right now the because of these tariff wars there's companies that are now pulling out of China and situating themselves in neighboring countries in Asia right maybe Thailand or one of the I know Thailand is getting a huge influx of uh, industry going in there right Brexit delayed due to vote of no confidence. China waiting out the elections in hope of new index. I love it. <laughs> so, index. This is index. Uh, index is opinion of what's going to happen regarding the questions. Right. I'm going to read what he wrote down, and then I'm going to read each question and read the reply. Right. So, index's reply. Uh, Brexit delay due to vote of no confidence. China waiting out the election in hopes of new leader. Fed drops raise 25 basis points uh, and uh, holds for the remainder of Trump's term. Okay, so the questions were asked Brexit hard or soft or delayed? Index reply Brexit delay because of vote of no confidence. Okay, Trump China, second question Trump China trade hope or reduction of tariffs? Reply China waiting out. The elections in hope of new leader and 2020 next year is the election so they're just gonna ride it out uh, from index's point of view until something better comes along a new leader comes along um, 
Fed cutting rates on September 19th reply Fed cuts rates to 25 basis points and holds for the remainder of Trump's term just my predictions yeah and then the fourth question Italy Italy and Germany economy getting worse I think everyone would agree they're gonna get worse right this is just the beginning of Italy uh, Europe going into a major downturn in my personal opinion I'm pretty sure index would agree and others might agree it seems like a, a mal malef maleficent issue my previous comment I mean I don't know what maleficent issue means maleficent I don't know that word uh, instead of me looking it up uh, Z money uh, ZW money can you let me know what that word means multi oh multi fat I'm reading it improperly multifaceted issue multifaceted multi issue uh, the previous comment will be ba -ba -ba -ba. yeah for sure it is that's one of the things playing Hong Kong is one of the things playing into this whole game as well right sup that hello kid how you doing hope you're going to school and paying attention in class because you're going to need a lot of information when you grow up <laughs> that Jevy 188 what do you think of Trump when he was campaigning talking that low rates hurt the economy because it stops competition and now that he is pr uh, president all he does is talk about they should lower it dude don't Trump is says look people like Trump a lot of people like Trump it's not just Trump it's Pel Pelosi it's Obama it's Clinton it's Bush all of these people all of these talking heads that are coming on TV and the industries uh, put him in place to represent whatever centralized institution that they're supposed to represent whatever they say don't take them seriously really they say whatever they need to say to have the opinion polls the sound bites the the noise just kick him up in this phase so if they're going like this they're gonna create waves so they can at least try to turn it around right of course full of hypocrisy guaranteed right what do I think about it I don't really think about what Trump says very much really I I personally try to pay attention of what is going on right like I didn't care what Obama was saying because Obama had the same type of hypocrisy as Trump has right take a look at what Obama said and take a look at what he did take a look at what Trump said take a look at what he did right like that's noise if you're following Trump's tweets stop following Trump's tweets if you're following news that is regurgitating Trump's tweets or Pelosi's tweets or anybody's tweets forget about it right what you need to do to figure out what's going on in the world politically economically is forget about what these leaders are saying take a look at the data take a look at the mathematics take a look at uh, stock prices take a look at what sectors of the economy are growing what this type of disruptive innovation is coming into play what legacy corporations multinationals are trying to desperately liquefy their assets pull their funds out of wherever it is to transfer it somewhere else because they know the bubble has burst over here forget about following the noise of your of the corporate uh, lackeys right look at what the corporations are doing okay lions thank you very much for the twitch prime sub or twitch tier one sub two months yay absolutely agree in says. I hope you agree with that <laughs> I just ranted <laughs> curious then what are you doing I was like Mike Pence is in Ireland at the moment and our prime minister is gay so that's a doozy Mike Pence oh is he okay okay cool that'll be cool <laughs> I, want, I want to see this is what I would like to see I would like to see the Irish Prime Minister shake hands with Mike Pence and shake hands the way the way that you you've seen certain other people shake hands when you grab them by one hand and shake them shake them hard nice firm grip and bring the other hand and put it on top of the other one and just shake them and then just touch their cheek a little bit <laughs> that's what I would like to see best thing to visit best thing to invest in yourself 100% curious Devin. by the way lions I'm sorry if I went off on that a little bit but uh, I have a thing against uh, 
uh, what do you call it, uh, fanaticism, right? Religious specifically. Hong Kong used to belong to Great Britain between 1841 and 1997. Belong to, um, that's a serious word, uh, belong to did it belong to or were they just occupying it Hong Kong is a valuable piece of land to control because of the position but also the financial system that is there today uh, but it is diminishing in a huge way right losing power in a big way uh, the British government has Robot, robotized, they control my thoughts of voice action and make me have accidents. I was too funny. Uh, well, now, I'm um, following Andrew Yang a lot because he talks about the money circulation problem and UBI, universal basic income, as part of a solution. I see no one else except maybe Max Kaiser talk about money circulation uh, being terrible. Um, the, so money circulation is uh, velocity of money, how fast money is changing hands between in the economy, right? Um, so velocity of money, from what I understand, I, I don't I don't follow uh, Yang, Andrew Yang. I've read a couple of things he said. I don't agree with him with universal basic income. That's just a stop gap measure band aid that basically inflates the bubble longer and uh, it'll burst again. Like it, it's a it in the limit it's going to breed poverty right class structure it's not a solution um, it, 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 i'm not saying that it's, it might not a band-aid may not be required but it's not a end game right um, yeah, circulation so from max kaiser i do follow him a little bit uh, from what i understand the data they presented frequency the velocity of money has decreased a fair bit so once that happens it means that investment is not being made there's less r d there's less trade taking place people are hoarding right because they know or they're afraid that there's going to be an economic downturn that is a big issue that is a big issue as far as uh schizomarmon hong kong is concerned uh, there's so many factors in play there there's so many people have their hands in the pot uh, really it's crazy index what most Americans fail to recognize with respect to China is the extent to which they can affect America's markets the amount of US debt they hold for starters but also the government's ability to prevent educational immigration if they prevent students from going to private schools in America American private schools will see a serious downturn in uh, in income including Canada's private schools as well in a huge way right they also have the capacity to manipulate their currency at will yen interest rates are centrally controlled unlike the USD okay. uh, I agree that people under are underestimating uh, China's effects I agree with index what they can do to the US economy but I think the US economy is very very resilient really it's insanely resilient the reason is resilient is because it's a war-based economy so whenever the US central powers corporations they see a serious downturn in the US economy the war machine kicks into high gear and just the production just snowballs right and that's the way the US economy has functioned for the last number of decades whenever there has been a threat of a serious readjustment in the global economic system that is going to be less u.s centric the global war machine the u.s war machine kicks into high gear right and it kicks them out of that possible change uh, that might be taking place that's one of the reasons we're seeing what we're seeing right now will it work again i don't know i hope not apparently they're getting on well haven't seen any handshakes are they too bad they should handshake lions I would love to see that handshake and a hug and a kiss I would love to see it I would love to see it 
it's not only the velocity of money it's who is getting the money before it changes hands yeah if it changes hands like for us uh, Dajavi 100% agreed with you because after the 2008 scam trillions of dollars were given to the powers that be and those trillions of uh, dollars uh, were not distributed down to the to the servants <laughs> right? to, to the citizens of the countries right or to the serfs they were hoarded right they there was a little bit of breadcrumbs spread here and there right but most of it was used to acquire assets or to inflate every bubble that you can think of really maybe the stock market maybe art maybe comic books maybe real estate real estate in a big way of course right a crazy yeah certain group groups countries gain a lot to destabilize region and support uh, protesters which is a common thing people tend to fail to see the reasons behind the actions yeah big time Chicho, I listened to your video Wars a Racket. I disagree that the entrepreneurs described it uh, described in this text did anything wrong. I don't think there is anything wrong with greed. I think there are only people, good people and bad people, whether whether rich, middle class or poor, would love your thoughts on this. Uh, curious Devin, I hundred percent agreed, but the the entrepreneurs that were involved in getting the US military to destroy other nations so they could get a hold of their resources they were wrong right that wasn't just greed that was their greed uh, translated into death and destruction of other nations of other peoples so it wasn't their greed that was bad. You can be greedy if you want to be. I'm, you know, I love fruit, right? Am I greedy with fruit? Oh, I love my fruit, man. Like, really, I want as much fruit as I can have, right? Some people feel that way about money. They want to have as much money as they can, they can have. Fine, have as much money as you want, right? But if I, to get my fruit, if I go to my neighbor's house, kill half their family and harvest their strawberries because I love strawberries right then my greed was translated into murder right an entrepreneur corporations greed for money it once it manifests itself as genocide <laughs> as, as destroying nations that is wrong that's what war is a racket is about is multinational corporations getting militaries specifically in this case is a US military to go into other nations destroy them install dictators overthrow democratically elected governments kill countless people so they can harvest bananas right that is wrong that is wrong Hey Chicho, hope you're having a great day. Happy to finally have a live stream. Awesome, will do for now. Glad you could make it. That was an intense little five minute rant that just went on it. Eh? All about strawberries. Or was it Banana Republic? Oh yeah, by the way, I should have ended with this. Just look up the word, the origin of the word of Banana Republic. And you'll find out where that word comes from okay hence fruit okay war is a racket find out where the word banana republic comes from right banana is it banana republic i think so and you'll pretty much understand uh u.s foreign policy or western foreign policy and a lot about economics and resources right Hi, fan of your YouTube videos, Polly Walnuts 8. I'm glad you like. I hope you like the live stream. Well, this is going to be uploaded to YouTube as well and BitChute, so it will be a video. That's, uh, I'm getting close to restarting the editing video 
the videos that we edit. The trillions of dollars were used to further stratify and enrich what was already going on. 100%. The Javi. I agree. Hey, sorry to ask again, but when would another math stream happen? Mask of Raven? Great question. Math stream tomorrow, 2 p.m. my time. Let's start. School started in my part of the world today, right? Let's start the math stream tomorrow. Okay. So two hours drop in math tutoring session, uh, 2 p.m. PDT my time. And we're going to go in front of the whiteboard and do a little bit of mathematics. Okay. And Mask of Raven, thank you for asking again. Uh, I get a lot of questions and I make a lot of promises and stuff like this. Sometimes I can't keep track of it all. Uh, so if I put out any promises, if I said ask me again and stuff like this, please do so. It's my way of being reminded of what I need to do. I don't like there's only so much I can keep track of. Uh, I'm not I'm not good in that front. I like doing <laughs> and I do plan out a lot of things, but they're really most of it is just mathematics, uh, laying out the math, personal finance, cooking videos and stuff like this. Uh, yes, but that is a moral issue, not a money issue. Okay, Curious Devin, my question to you is then what is your critique of war is a racket? What's the, what's the problem with uh, them saying that what the entrepreneurs were doing was wrong? Because you can't really separate a human being from the moral question, right? Every human being has some kind of standards. In, co in comic books, for example, there's a uh, intergalactic assassin, fantastic character, one of the greatest characters in comic book history called Lobo, right? And when he, when he gives his word, he does what he says, right? So he never negates. Uh, what do you call it goes back on his word right and he has no hesitation of assassinating anyone okay but he has one love that he always uh, will take care of right and that's dolphins that's Lobo's moral obligation right uh, space dolphins by the way or that was the original Lobo recently it well not recently in the 90s became a little bulldog little dog there too but he was his partner really but even an intergalactic assassin has some kind of moral obligation to its environment, right? You can't say, you, can, you know, it's not a moral issue, it's a money issue. What did you do? Where did that money come from, right? That is a question you must ask. Dude, you probably call W w when it's a double v <laughs> what a front <laughs> stay well good but you probably call w w when it's a double v maybe that's tricky uh, American author O. Henry coined the term to describe Honduras and neighboring countries under economic exploitation by U.S. corporations such as the United Fruit Company. And that is the origin of the word of Banana Republic. Thank you very much, Index. Right? And right there, let's read that again. The origin of the word Banana Republic. American author O. Henry coined the term to describe Honduras and neighboring countries under economic exploitation by U.S. corporations such as the United Fruit Company, right? End quoting. Index. Now, which country was named in the sentence? Ah, two countries, United States and Honduras, right? This word was coined, I believe, in the 19... When was it, Index? 1930s, 40s, 50s? I can't remember when it was. It was before 1950s, I believe. Okay. Honduras, right? What's one of the main countries that is having uh, serious economic turmoil in Central America, 
and let's say the Latin Americas, right, where you've seen a mass migration of people coming into the United States, Honduras, what just recently happened in Honduras during the Obama administration was a military coup of an elected representative. And the U.S. government and the Canadian government and most Western governments supported that military coup. They supported the military dictatorships that came in, right? That gave guns to gangsters and stuff like that. Where crime rate went through the roof. Drug, like it was insane, right? So in the last eight years, Honduras came on to the front lines of news right now. And by what? Banana Republic. That's where the one of the country we're talking about when the like we could loop this <laughs> for a gazillion years, right? Hey, I worked at Banana Republic in college. <laughs> And by the way, Banana Republic is also a textile uh, company where they have stores in Canada and the United States as well, I believe, uh, probably Europe, where they sell clothing, shoes, and overpriced uh, textiles, right? Yeehaw. Yeehaw regarding the math stream. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it too. Then wouldn't UBI be a start or at least a partial solution to money not getting to the poorest people um, here, here's the thing um, the Javi one of the problems with the our current economic system is this the very rich have, have easy access to money the extremely poor have certain amount of support it's the ones in the middle that get rolled over right so what that's going to do is going to take a lot of funds from the middle 80 percent and distribute it the ubi for the short term the lower uh, the extremely poor is going to be a little bit better off right but it's going to take funds from 80 percent of the population okay filter a lot of that some of it not a lot of it some of it to the bottom 15 percent and most of it is going to go to the top 5%. Just look at the percentage of money that for private charities, even government charities or whatever it is, from charities that actually make their way to the impoverished. Depending on the charity, it's a very small percent. You'd be amazed. Some of the charities you look at, large charities that collect hundreds of millions of dollars, like maybe if you're lucky 10 to 15 percent of the money they collect goes to the actual people they're supposed to be helping where's the other 85 percent isn't there a better way to do this instead of centralizing everything right i have to tune out for a moment i feel like i missed some heavy discovery <laughs> maybe twitching jason what's going on chicho sleepy waves how's life how you doing isn't money and its function in our society fraught with moral problems 100 percent Money and morality are very closely uh, linked, 100%. I agree with Mask of Raven. And one of the things is, I, I always bring this up when we, when we start using money. We always have to keep in mind there's a difference between money and currency, right? Everything is money. This is money. I could cut this and sell this. I'm money. My time is money. My resources are money. My labor is money right your money your time sitting here watching this is money right fruits are money everything is money everything has value right that's the way I interpret money everything has value right but once you start commodifying everything putting the weight of a currency on the money on those things that are all around us maybe air water then we have a problem because you've given you've pegged the value of that resource commodity necessity to a fiat currency right then we have serious problems because in our current economic system in our class structure there are 
institutions, organizations, individuals that have unlimited access to unlimited funds. So once they praise, put a value on anything, and right now, the whole economic system is based on commodifying everything, right? So once you put a price tag on anything, then those who print our money and distribute it among their friends, they can buy anything, right? They can buy water, they can buy air, they can buy you and me, right? Our economic system needs that really defined distinction between what is money and what is a currency, okay? Once we wrap our heads around that thing, we are free. I agree, Master Raven. It's a way of, uh, it's a gateway into so many things, an avenue for the good and bad. Money and morality are very closely linked. Big money equals GMO and hybrid seeds that the world farmers have to buy. Because they buy these, uh, they need to invest in special fertilizers. And this is Monsanto's basically or bear right now because bear bought monsanto business model right it's like drug addicts business model first few samples are free then you're addicted then you pay through the nose right or through the roof or whatever the saying is uh need to invest in special fertilizer and other stuff next season you bought you have to rebuy everything because the ground is poison and the seeds are made to not uh, not being able to be used again yeah and sticks are mana that's on the production side of it right on the consumption side of it those gmo grown or with pesticides and herbicides and all this stuff right that are grown in soil that is not rich in natural natural uh, what do you call it organically generated nutrients but it's through chemicals most likely petrochemicals food fed in then the harvest what you're eating doesn't have the nutrients that the body needs right as a percentage that's a let's say right so an organically grown apple in your backyard that you gave it your compost food the food that you're eating right compared to an apple grown by agro business doesn't have the same nutrients as this does so you have to over consume this to get the same quantity anyway right so you get health issues you get over consumption issues you're using up the resources a lot more because if it takes one gallon of water i don't know how much it takes to have an apple organically it might take three four five gallons of water to grow five or six apples that you need for the same nutrient it's it's a domino it's a domino that is what our economic system is people look at our economic system individually as this is standalone this is standalone. it is not right because the whole chain of product production has been linked up through centralized power and that is the problem with centralization right overpriced is correct yeah such a dark joke banana republic selling cheap textile exports as overpriced commodities in the west yup index crazy crazy that's how you keep the finan financial growing yeah it's modern capitalism it's just gross that they named the company banana republic it's crazy <laughs> it's crazy and in vancouver the banana republic used to i don't I haven't been in there I don't know 20 years I don't I don't know how long it's been around right uh, I found myself in there a couple of times and you go in there and they're usually set up on like the expensive streets and it's you look at this thing it's just like wow blows you away once you know the economics behind it and the word behind it the myth where it originated from is that a raspberry yeah I buy one uh, I buy one uh, from you, <laughs> so yeah. it's raspberry and the strawberries. These strawberries, I think this is the last batch of strawberries we're getting locally. They're amazing, really.
so good. Agreed. Most people are completely unaware of the roots of, of the term though. The poor get support, but they don't get money. So why would anyone in the middle class or rich class be interested in them? But with a little money, then there would be new demand and new markets for all classes. Oh, that's such a... idealistic perspective and man Dajavi I agree with you I wish I wish no one interested in you except when you have uh, some cash here's the thing uh, I wish I lived in the world that you this ideology lives in right because at some point I did I thought that was a possible solution is to distribute that money get a centralized institution to give money to the poor and bring them out of poverty and stuff like this and then you realize in our capitalistic system the way it's set up as soon as you do that there's Wall Street corporations and stuff there that place themselves between those who need help and where the help is okay and start taking money off the table one of the best examples i have of this is payday loans or corporations like that right where banks don't allow people with bad credit to open up bank accounts right credit unions as well if you have bad credit you're gonna have a hard time opening up a credit union account right so banks are out of the question credit unions are out of question and what happens is the very poor that are on welfare they get money every month in my area anyway uh, from the government right and if they don't have a bank account what they need to do is go to these secondary corporations which are payday loans and they cash their checks there and the service charges they pay is a lot more than what it would be on a bank right so all of a sudden there's little money take being taken off the table those kinds of corporations are in every step not one but two three four five they're everywhere right they're everywhere the healthy the healthy lifestyle hype hit the earth what happened to price of healthy food demand and supply good business model good business model right now we need more gmo to support the demand of healthy food <laughs> now you are stuck in the pockets yeah gmo is not healthy food that's the kicker right people have uh, been utterly tricked into believing non GMO is healthier or better mask of raven I disagree okay there is some economic on monoculture criticism you can make for sure there is right and it's not very little it's a lot right but they are largely a force for good and help us use less land and pesticides I disagree I disagree because they devastate a region they poison a region they become they make it uh, um, da, 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 da. anyway there's, there's so much in there like there's so much in there really and for example for us we have a CSA in the summers right Sp spring to fall we have a CSA we pay money on the front end to a farmer right like $500 or something for about five months worth of produce herbs and stuff like this that's grown locally there's less transportation right when you're talking about GMOs and stuff like this you got to take everything into consideration right not just the how much land <laughs> re human power or whatever it is took to have one apple GMO grown or one apple local you know organically you also have to take into consideration the transportation costs the storage costs the nutrient factors all that jazz and then what happens to the land 10 years down the road right can it still produce food yes but they create value otherwise people won't buy their clothes technology is deflationary and it will close the gap <laughs> I think I usually use kick in the 
in the food streams. Speaking of clothing companies, such as someone who worked at one long ago, I've always been fascinated by the moral dynamics behind the clothing industry. Cheap and affordable clothing is produced by underpaid labor, while the more sustainable products are ridiculously expensive. And one could argue that the amount one spends on more sustainable products could be better spent on those in need. Tushin Jason, it's, it's a good question. I have, I have a friend that uh, has a textile company and she has pitched a documentary that uh, she's been meaning to make regarding the uh, chain of production and stuff like that. We talked a fair bit about it. it the textile industry is crazy, right? People want cheap products but you have to replace those more often and then they complain about you know they donate money to places that support non-child labor so they're, it's contradictory right and all that jazz uh, for us in my area i can tell you this in my area there's a lot of independent uh, local uh, designers that have been popping up and i know a lot of people that only buy from local designers it is more expensive but the quality is better they know the money is staying locally so if you extend that one or two degrees what happens is it improves your community so a lot of people have that mindset as well when it comes to consuming textiles and other things as well food specifically as well right so it's a big question it's a big question Sorry if I'm super off topic or behind here. No, me too. I'm way behind, I think. Actually, I think I caught up with chat. Trying to work and participate in the convo at the same time. No worries, Tuching Jason. I read as I go down and I'll hopefully I can keep track of the discussions and talk about them, right? I respectfully disagree with about underpaid labor. No one is forced to work. Uh, curious, Devin, I disagree. There is slave labor. And slave labor doesn't mean they're underpaid. There are actually people being held in camps that are slave camps where they're making things. There are people who are being told to join a shipping vessel where they go on a ship to in different parts of the world. I don't know. I don't think that exists too much in Canada, but in certain parts of the world, they're going to go catch fish, right, or seafood. And they're not paid they're not allowed to leave if they talk too much they are thrown off board so there are people that are actually working as slaves in our current economic system right so you can't say no one is forced to work there are plenty of people forced to work in the United States prisoners are forced to work I believe I don't know if they're forced to work maybe some of them just do it because they need the exercise right but there's chain gangs in the United States in in the past uh, in the history of the United States we know this is a fact that certain counties certain regions would arrest people because they needed chain gangs they needed roads built cotton picked right so centralized power can easily in different parts of the world this used to happen keep in mind this used to happen probably still does happen in the United States right so you can't say no one is forced to work there millions of people that are forced to work in the world right as slaves so why not market fabric that are cheap and long-lasting like hemp oh wait because the war on drugs 100 percent 100 percent crazy v just a war on war on drugs and hemp textiles right correct me if i'm wrong on this but last i looked up looked this up and i looked I looked this up for a number of years I was an advocate right and I am an advocate hemp is the strongest naturally occurring long chain uh, fab fiber that we know of it's resilient it's tough and they made it illegal the war World War one World War two was one one of the things that <laughs> was used to win it was hemp right the US government used to run ads grow hemp it's funny how a lot of people think China is paying for Trump's tariffs against China but the fact is that it's the American people and importers who end up paying for the tariffs 
For the short term, yes. That's one place I disagree with a lot of people regarding who's paying the tariffs. For the short term, it's the American citizens that are paying the tariffs, right? Canadian citizens, whoever they might be, right? But maybe, maybe, just maybe, those people who support these tariffs are not as stupid as people think they are. Maybe they're looking at their kids that are like two years old and going, you know what? we need to have industry in our country we can't have all our corporations making product outside of our country because when our two-year-old grandchildren or children grow up they're gonna need jobs they're gonna need to live in an economic system that is sustainable that ideally is local we're willing to pay the extra tariffs right now to not buy these cheap products we want products that are grown raised created in our own country right? it's not a ju just about the short-term price fluctuations that is what power wants you to think it is about the cycles that we go through not the noise where is their slave labor in the US? Where is their slave labor in the US? Do you live in a big city? Do you have massage parlors in your city? Half of those massage parlors have slave labor. Okay. And if you're buying product that's made from seafood to textiles that is made in certain parts of the world, like this is known right it's just not general knowledge right it's a fact that some of that product may have been grown raised created by slave labor i just listened to a radio program yesterday on cbc canadian news broadcaster on the radio talking about the seafood industry that a lot of cambodians and filipinos or whatever they're looking for work migrants that are going around right i think that these they were interviewing cambodians that were told that they were going to go on a ship to you know get some seafood and stuff they were promised this work and and this money and they never got paid and a couple of their sea mates were thrown overboard because you know they talked too much and some of them had to jump over ship to escape their slave in camp like really So why will, why not market fabric? Oh yeah, we read that, we read that, US, yeah. Right on the money. Gasoline is a good example of that. Yeah. Washing machine is also an example. Read, read somewhere the price increase uh, with about 12%. The consumer always pays. Yeah. But cheap is good, especially for the people that work hard every day with a low salary. <laughs> Are there? Are they going to increase the salaries with the higher cost? Doubt it, doubt it. Hello, Chicho, just popping in to say hi. Great setup. We'll watch this later. Awesome. Glad you like it, uh, Dramatu. Yeah, it's pretty. I'm actually thinking about uh, just doing one stream, just maybe after this, just turning on the computer. Actually, I might have to go somewhere after this. Just doing a Chicho Patio live stream, just <laughs> turn it on and go do what I need to do inside the house. <laughs> I think what Chicho said is why Trump is pushing for tariffs to bring companies back to the US. That that is what Trump is saying. I personally don't think Trump is really cares too much about that. I think Trump is doing it to keep his base to give his give his voter uh, keep his voter support, right? Uh, I, I don't you know I don't think Trump is doing anything for the betterment of the American people because it's for the betterment of American people I think he's doing it because he's gonna get something out of it right and you got to give credit to the dude man the guy he said he was gonna do some stuff and he's doing those stuff that's what his voter people voted him for right and the other half are run by Donald Trump no. 
Yes, but with having companies back in the US, they will make the value of that product higher than the value of the product if it was made in China. Then add in mind, the salaries will probably not keep up with the increase of cost for US made product. I see, I, you know what? It's a trap. It is a trap to a certain degree because there's disruptive innovation in play, big time, right? So the question is, which industries are gonna set up shop in the United States? Is it gonna be the knitting industry, <laughs> textile industry? I don't know, I, I really don't know. Is that a sustainable thing? How's, how's automation gonna play into all this? All that's going on right now is saying, hey, uh, what are they, I forget the terms that people are calling this thing, right? It depends on which side of the spectrum you're from. We went from underpaid banana republic workers to massage parlor workers. Yes, curious David. 100%. Concer 100% uh, curious David. You, 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 you ask me, curious David, you ask me, wait, wait, wait. Where is their slave labor in the US? That exists in the US. Okay. If you ask me a more specific question, I'll answer more specifically. <laughs> but I agree. Having big companies in your own country that bring, uh, bring in a lot of money to the people is very good. Very good. And also, there's R&D, research and development, being done in the country. So there's the possibility of disruptive innovation technology kicking into gear and more branching off into more industry right so it's not just that factory to make this thing it's the spin-offs from that the food carts the the retail space the the housing everything right but it also comes with a certain cost and it also comes with a certain cost the farmer subsidies are crazy though agree the farmer subsidies are insane how many of these farmers admittedly reject socialized programs yeah corporate socialism right the united states right now one of the best descriptive terms of what the western economic systems are is corporate socialism right a majority a majority and now in support of big business your farm has to be a certain size to receive the subsidies. 100% agree. Which is one of the reasons this behind you that you see, right? Greenery, harvesting our own little bit of fruits and vegetables. And, like, really, it's amazing, right? I feel good not buying from agribusiness, right? It's like a butterfly effect, if you've heard about that saying it's like the butterfly effects yes farmers cutting off their nose to spite their face yeah am i in the minority here saying i think trump isn't such a bad guy i'd hang out with him uh i think curious Devin. i think you're in a minority thinking that trump isn't a bad guy i think trump is a piece of crap okay however everything that he does is not bad okay just because a piece of crap is picking up garbage on the streets you don't say oh piece of crap stop picking up garbage on the streets no you're cleaning up the streets good stuff thank you I'll even say thank you right maybe they won't be a piece of crap down the road if enough people say thank you to them I don't think Trump is a nice guy if, if you know anything about Trump you know he's not a nice guy really okay but everything that he's doing is not necessarily bad it's crazy it's like everything that obama did was good but no that's crazy right yeah if you have if you have the space go ahead and start up a small grow operation in your garden after all wouldn't it be nice to eat healthy food food fruits that's been growing from healthy poison free earth 100 percent, and it saves you money not much but it saves you money it gives you a little bit of exercise so it keeps you healthier right you really think he's a nice guy that's fine curious David he's done he's said some stuff he's done some stuff that sure but he's also waging economic warfare on Venezuela right that are hurting that 
are causing the death of thousands in the long run maybe tens of thousands of people right if the sanctions continue the way they did with Iraq in the 1990s where Madeleine Albright came out said and they asked her if they thought the price of the sanctions was, was worth it since by conservative estimates half a million children had died because of the sanctions and Madeleine Albright came out and said she thought the price was worth it right now would you call Madeleine Albright a nice person because she thought the price of sanctions was worth it when the price was half a million Iraqi children dying because of the sanctions I wouldn't put anyone as being a nice person in that category right or anyone from that category as being a nice person that's my personal take right if you're responsible for hundreds of thousands of deaths tens of thousands of deaths thousands of deaths hundreds of deaths dozens of deaths innocent deaths you're not a nice person for me that's end of sentence boink he's a slumlord turned politician slumlord yep i met him once when i was a kid super nice guy <laughs> here is that <laughs> space force into yeah the space force is crazy i guess that militarizing i mean the space has been militarized for a while but actually coming out and saying we've actually created a new branch of the u.s military called it space force right the space force space calm didn't they call it space calm it's like africa right like AFRICOM came into existence in the mid 2000s right that was a game changer that was a game changer africa had become so uh, complicated now there's so many players in play and there was so much money covert operation that needed to go in there that they created a new branch to u.s military called africa and africa was not going to get better it's gone to shit even more right space calm right i think that's what they're calling it isn't it total domination of world under trump not under trump under the u.s military okay also don't forget to save uh, as much seeds as you can and want wash wash them and then store them do you wash the seeds uh skits are right owning a lot of seeds in the future might turn into a small gold mine in every aspect seeds i don't wash the seeds i just harvest them uh, like whatever they are right some fruits uh, seeds for sure right uh wash them and then let them dry like berries and stuff mulberries i have mulberry seeds and uh, some other seeds that i do have you can grow your own uh, food in case it's needed you can trade with seeds you can trade with what you grow yeah food is uh, tradable as a commodity right? it's money right? and by the way twitching um, uh, sticks are mana uh, I store my seeds in the freezer and some in totally dry in jars right I think freezer should keep longer I'm pretty sure you should be okay okay with that you know, to countless billions of deaths through action they should make me I guess I'm gonna skip some of your comments I would love to see a government who incentivize, incentivized small business startups to break up the market share in certain industries where there are a few big players. Yeah, curious time, I'd love to see it as well. Me too. Me too. Cool. I'm gonna eat more strawberries, raspberries. I'm not gonna eat the if you came in late check this out this is one thing we harvested cucumber with watermelon <laughs> oh that focus nice they gave it a good focus come on focus again they gave it a good focus it's not gonna focus it's too close oh look at that it focused awesome isn't this the cutest thing look at this thing watermelon cucumber by the way what's up here is that grape raspberry and a strawberry right. 
Lessons today from live streams. Don't rub your neighbor's crops. <laughs> Don't rub your neighbor's crops. That being said, these grapes that you see behind us, that's from our neighbor. They're growing it, right? And the grapes came over, so we directed it up the up the steps and up to here and we built this thing we harvested a whole bunch of grapes this is the grapes from that right so it's not robbing um, sharing share your share your fruits uh, your harvest with your neighbor that's the other story delicious well done thanks Ayaz one sp scary thing about space warfare the closest thing we have to an applicable law is maritime law, international waters. Until the law catches up, there is a ton of possibility for unprosecutable war crimes. Would they uh, not be held accountable if they committed war crimes on land, uh, based on the laws of the land, or maritime law? And there, there's common law and maritime law, are they the same thing? Is that, is that its correct size? I've never seen that, yes, it's its correct size. <laughs> I'm creating, I'm creating a real time live stream, optical illusion to blow your mind. Ready? Here's a gigantic one. I should hold it like, bring a bottom out like this and just go clack, clack, clap my hands and do this. I've shrunk it down. But this is it, that's his actual size. Let's see if we can make it focus again. <laughs> Super cute. <laughs> like crazy cute, right? Like look at this thing. So cute. Right? Nice. Hey Chicho. What were your main criticism of GMOs? I'd like to look into it further. Uh, Mask of Raven, first criticism, who owns the patents, right? And should corporations be able to, be able to create Terminator Cs and release them into nature, right? Because all, sci all scientific history tells us this. If you're gonna conduct an experiment you better make sure it's a closed experiment because you don't know what's going to happen to it when it's released into the open, right? So first order of business, the way it's been conducted and who owns the patents, right? And then we can talk about the health benefits and the destruction of the soil, the, the, the nutrient factor, the, the sub, uh, the secondary of health effects on human beings and we can talk about all that crap later, right? Hit, hit the, the, the head first. Really, patents for seeds and patent for terminator seeds, releasing terminator seeds, not a closed, scientifically, that person, if, if a scientist was doing this, you would put him in jail, right? They would, they would have their credentials pulled, right? period but we're giving these these corporations as institutions uh, corporate welfare to experiment on all of us there's there's GMO products sees taking over other crops right there's uh, what do they call them uh, mutant uh, weeds uh, not mutants they're called Frankenstein weeds coming up and stuff like that really who's who's going to be held accountable for this right who was that a baby wow <laughs> it's open for <laughs> it's a, i love this thing but it's a it's a cucumber watermelon look at this thing come on focus 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 oh it's not focusing focus no oh there it is cucumber watermelon I haven't cracked it open this is our first harvest I don't know what that looks like on the inside we're gonna crack it open as long as they are uh, thoroughly dried and in okay this is about seeds so as long as they are thoroughly dried and in a 
airtight container or something it should be good in the freezer as long as the temperature is stable okay cool awesome i assume you don't have a, a cryogenic chamber at the home somewhere no <laughs> it's because it's impossible to determine sovereign land and space how do you invade space that hasn't been defined as a country's yet so the war crime oops i <laughs> knocked the camera with my foot so the hold on let me adjust this bring it back to our position so uh, but if they commit the war crimes on land so if they send rockets bombs on land destroy certain countries then they can be held uh, responsible for the war crimes right but if they commit atrocities in space all of a sudden take down somebody's space station then they don't have to be held accountable is that correct that I can understand yeah but then that would kick off a general war on land here I'm assuming the winds picking up hopefully it's not affecting the mic too much in UK they take your organs unless you opt out yeah I feel like I'm <laughs> I read your comment I guess. just a sidetrack uh, an organ uh, black market organ uh, market business is huge right uh, harvesting organs from people that did not opt in for their organs to be harvested yeah I feel like I'm looking at uh, a forced perspective piece like that uh, like they did in the Lord of Rings for the Hobbits suddenly Chicho was <laughs> feet tall. Nice. Think, yeah, this bloody good idea. You're dead. You're not using them. Oh yeah, you're talking things. So things replied to IS. In UK they take your organs unless you opt out. And things reply is yeah, it's a it's a bloody good idea. You're dead. You're not using them. Well, the patents and uh, Terminator series are the parts I agree with. You agree with them or disagree with them? The health effects of soil are what I'm not convinced of. Oh, okay, so you're that way. But yes, under our capitalistic system, those problems exist in a huge way. Huge way. So might as well hit it up uh, in the front end when it's starting to kick into effect, right? I just arrived, Lord welcome welcome hello everyone what do you think about harvesting cloned organs limbs and tissues from ana anacephalic bodies exactly no one knows yet ba -ba -da -ba -ba. oh exactly no one knows yet so what's gonna happen if they bomb a country a region from space if it originated from there I'm assuming it's gonna get into the law where you prosecute people where the crime was committed right I think that law exists regarding extradition wherever the crime was committed then that jurisdiction has the first right of prosecuting someone from what I understand anyway as long as there's extradition treaties in space they won't go crazy on each other if they come across each other they will wait and most likely see what the other one do first one to make the mistake is the loser maybe hey friends and brothers have a great evening i have to go peace on earth and in space curious Devin. agreed agreed there's an outer space treaty um i don't think so there is there was cooperative treaties where they were um uh, you know occupying the same space space station and worked together and did stuff but i think that ended uh, in the last few years same as dead bodies or third printed organs as long as it works it's not a problem right but two warning warring nations are not going to agree to extradite one another one <laughs> yeah that's true extradite one another yeah and then it'll just escalate overly religious types always get annoyed because their grandpa's grandpa's heart is in another human being and not rotting in a ditch is very funny yeah. 
I think, Tink, one of the issues with it is the moral issue of it, and not necessarily from the religious front. It's also from the centralization front, right? Uh, because we know there's organ harvesting going on around the world, illegal black market organ harvesting going on around the world. Once we roll this out, organ harvesting everywhere and any way possible, then how do we keep tabs and make sure that people aren't being given a chance to come back from whatever it is that they're coming back from or to live uh, because someone has their eye on their organs right once this kicks into effect there won't be a shortage shortage of organs for after I don't know how many years right and then things will stabilize but because there's huge demand for organs right now there's a huge black market so there might be the need to kick into gear you know some kind of disruptive innovation or technology where you provide an oversupply of organs uh, to get rid of that demand right? the one problem with auto organ harvesting or things like that uh, are religious factors but i think it's responsible that unless you have explicitly opted out it happens it shouldn't be something that doesn't happen unless you sign up because no one wants to do that and think about their death and things like that yeah there are masquerading there are people that are concerned that if something happens to them okay when they go into a hospital because there is seriously high demand for their some part of their organ then the system will not allow them the time to possibly come out of whatever it is that they're in okay there is that mindset as well okay and that's related to our horrendous healthcare systems right? there's no trust I'm a Protestant Christian and I'm 100% pro organ donating there is an outer space treaty 109 countries are in, in on it cool I don't think the United States would be in on it the treaty explicitly forbids any government to claim a celestial resource such as the moon or a planet article 2 of the treaty states that outer space including the moon and other celestial bodies is not subject to national uh, I should have been doing quotes but I'm not uh, sorry uh, is not I'm quoting right now is not subject to national appropriation by claim of sovereignty by means of use or occupation or by any other means however the state that launches a space object retains jurisdiction and contra control over that object the state is also liable for damages caused by its space object so that could be applied to the war as well if they blow up land or country but I doubt if uh, the United States or Russia or China will have signed on to this how this treaty actually will work out is the real question so 109 countries is 270 how many countries 270 plus countries sticks our mana if you could find out if uh, which spacefaring nations uh, are not on that list such as china united states uh, russia i doubt if pakistan would be in on it or India I think most of them would be US China Russia is on are they on really I'm impressed I'm impressed so this could apply to the war crimes I guess England as well France cool Germany cool And keep in mind, all these treaties they can pull out at any time they want, right? I guess we haven't talked hard, hard economics, personal finance, really, but we've talked about the political front of it. How much would you pay for the cloned IS, organs, etc.? Or do you think the government should provide it free of charge?
question national health care. Well, does national health care work? Sure, it does. Right? Should a nation take care of the health of, the, of its citizens? Of course it should. Long term, economically, it makes sense. Right? In a big way. In a big way. I'm getting close to making uh, the spreadsheet. The, once the eBay auctions end this week, I'm gonna, uh, what do you call it? Uh, finalize the spreadsheets, the data that I've collected for the eBay sales that we've done. And we're gonna do some ASMR math, overlapping it with the one comic books video that I put together already. Uh, I haven't shot it, but I know what we're gonna talk about. And the spreadsheet, we're gonna know. So we're gonna start looking at some hard numbers in regards to rate of return, investment, and cost, and profits, and all this jazz. Any healthcare should be provided free at point of service. At point of service. In Canada right now, uh, and I think in a lot of countries, if you walk through the door of an emergency uh, ward in the hospital, they have to try to save your life or try to help you out. Unless it's minor like headaches or whatever it is. And they're just going to say, what are you doing here? Sticks are not on. The price will be made by how much you really need the organ. Some organs are more valuable for sustaining life than others. Yeah, And the will to live as well. Some people might say, no, I'm done. Right? I don't want to go in operation. I don't want to go through therapy. I don't want to be in, I don't know what the right term is, physically not functional. I don't want to live in pain. I'm done when the heart gives, when the liver gives, when the kidney gives, when the lung gives, when whatever gives. Hey, Chicho, fortunate to catch a live stream. Glad to have you, dragons. 108 dragons. There was someone else here with 108 was it but it was at the end of their name 108 dragons I think he told us where that was from what was that from some sci-fi book where they had 108 dragons I think we're gonna go blackberry picking today nice there's a butterfly here I caught a raccoon in our porch today these are the best streams, always good discussions. Yeah, I love these streams as well. <laughs> it's the name of a triad and man manga. Is it? 108 Dragons. Crying Freeman. Oh, I think I've seen, uh, I, I know Crying Freeman a long time ago, man, long time ago. During my uh, Ninja Scroll days, since I started hanging out here, I've gained five more IQ according to a test I took <laughs> funny <laughs> maybe I, I put that IQ test out right maybe I should put out a Chicho IQ test and you just answer questions things that you know we've done your IQ will be higher that's what some of those tests are right if you know their system oh you're smarter we'll put out a Chicho IQ test <laughs> what, what's the best time of day that's the first question. What's the best time of day? Who knows the answer? Who has plus 10 IQ to whatever IQ they have right now? What's the best time of day? In a 24 hour day, what's the best time of day? <laughs> After I deliver life extension, I as through cloned organs, transplants, I hope to deliver rotary propulsion satellites so we can escape our universe. <laughs> by rotary propulsion? I don't think you could escape it by rotary propulsion, I guess. Wormholes, maybe? But the universe, how do you escape this universe? This universe is energy matter based, right? But we, we know what a matter is? Uh, well, to a certain degree. Uh, but we're not 100% sure what the energy does. Best time of day, 4.20. <laughs> Your IQ just went up another 10. <laughs> awesome. Oh, fun. Oh, fun. Gotta love these streams. 
I love being in the patio. I should. I, I I wish we did more more streams in the patio, but the, we've been I've been doing a lot of stuff out here, the harvesting, going fruit picking. It's nice. It's a pretty patio. We're gonna do a barbecue here in a couple of days. We got a whole bunch of friends coming over. I need to research magnet. Magneto, magneto relativity first. Yeah, magnets are powerful things, man. Magnets are powerful things. Adjust, adjust. Don't know if this is the right stream, but I have a math-related question. A one out of high school, college, but would like to. Oh, the wind's picking up. Would like to study algebra and calculus as a hobby. Where is the best place to start for self-study? Magneto from X-Men, yeah. I watched the most recent X-Men movie last night, uh, Dark Phoenix. Uh, 108 Dragons, I'll reply to you, but let me deal with the X-Men thing. I read the IMDB reviews on it, right? I looked at the number, it was after the movie, I looked at the number, it was like 5.9, and you read the reviews. I've never seen such horrendous reviews on any movie in my life, right? one out of ten one out of ten you scroll down it's like one out of ten out of like a hundred views maybe there's like two of them that are like seven out of ten eight out of ten one person was nine out of ten or something like this right <laughs> no rush okay awesome i'm usually here just for the comments awesome awesome uh and uh i read them and we watched it last night right and we're like man that was a better movie than apocalypse was right or the previous x-men movie it was a good movie for me, I gave it an 8 out of 10. 7 or 8 out of 10, right? And the reviews were like, oh, who wrote this? Blah, blah, blah. Man, comic book people, stop being so angry. Consider this movie to be an else world movie. Okay, sure, there were things that were iffy, but it was a step up, major step up from Apocalypse. And Apocalypse could have been an amazing movie, right? But it wasn't. Okay, so people were like, hating on this thing i'm like I, I got a laugh out of just reading i'm like man you guys are out of your mind right uh as for the mathematics uh, look up uh, paul's notes they have a lot of really useful stuff yeah some of those notes stuff is really good but here's the kicker do you still remember 108 dragons do you still remember how to add and subtract negative numbers fractions and how to move around an equal sign so and I really mean this right so if you're given something like 2x over 15 minus 3x plus 5 over x no not x let's say 12 equals 17 plus 2x or whatever it is right can you solve that equation if you don't know that right forget about getting into functions yet learn the basics right and the basics you can learn anywhere right i have videos up that you can learn that stuff right you know adding subtracting multiplying dividing adding fractions common denominator prime factorization moving around an equal sign how to solve an equation factoring right factoring should be after all those right so learn the basic first especially especially how to deal with fractions right multiplying fractions and adding fractions and when you have fractions and equal signs right so deal with those first once you know those then look into functions what it means to graph a line okay uh, from there you can start going into more complicated functions or you could start looking at data sets okay. uh, as far as where to begin um, yeah some cold like Cole's notes or what's the other notes called Paul's notes are good just basic stuff and there's a lot of stuff you could just gonna do exercises right and there's lots of exercises available online so my recommendation would be just to go online and say uh, adding worksheet right in DuckDuckGo or whatever search engine you use just go adding worksheet and just find a worksheet just add numbers adding negative number worksheets find a worksheet do that adding fractions find a worksheet try to do it if you don't know how to do it look up a couple of videos that come back to you ASAP Right, really fast, Speedy Gonzalez style, right? And add fractions, right? 
and then multiplying fractions, and then dividing, and then solving basic equations one step, solving basic equations two step, and then factoring, and just work your way up that way, right? Damn, that's tomorrow night's viewing sorted then. Nice. The X-Men, yeah. Also, 3 Blue Brown has a pretty great calculus series. Yeah, if you want to go calculus, like if, if you know how to do all the basics and you know functions, you know databases, or how to manage data and statistics, a little bit probability, and how to graph functions, right? Then calculus would be one step you could go to, or intense statistics. And I agree, like uh, Mask of Raven uh, stated, 3 Blue, 1 Brown, fantastic math channel. I find it very uh, more on the entertaining front, like, oh, super cool, oh, super cool, right? It's not on the work front where you want to actually become good at mathematics. It's more trying to understand how math works in, uh, in our world, really. Only issue I have with most movies coming out the last couple of years are too much political correctness. Yeah, I agree. Nobody act logically anymore. It's all... Uh, uh, feelings based I agree Sticks man. and X-Men has that as well it's like a scene from new Godzilla they are on top of a giant animal that was in deep sleep it stands up and they they are on the shell, the shell of it somebody somebody on the uh, s suddenly one of the characters screams how can you deny the <laughs> climate changes really <laughs> that's too funny in the X-Men, there's a part where Rogue turns to... I'm gonna, it's, it's not a spoiler, it's at the beginning almost. It's just a one-liner. Uh, Ro uh, not Rogue, um, Raven turns to uh, uh, Professor Xavier and says, uh, you know, he's calling him out and that someone's bullshit. And he turns to Professor Xavier and says, and by the way, why do you call it X-Men? Why don't you call it X-Women, right? So, it's everywhere. When the situation had nothing to do with the climate change, yeah. And nothing else had anything to do with the climate change either. I know, they're throwing that stuff in everywhere, it's weird. Cool, I dig your older videos. Also checking out the other resources. Yeah, uh, seriously, if you want just cool problem solving like solutions, three, brown, uh, three blue, one brown is very good. You said X-Men Apocalypse was was good, right? I thought X-Men Apocalypse was a good movie too. What was your main reason? I just wonder. Uh, you know, Barbarian, it was okay. It, it wasn't, Apocalypse was okay, portrayed nicely. I like the origin, the origin they, they did well. The final battle wasn't that good. Uh, Apocalypse, it could have been better. It could have been much better, right? Because they told the Apocalypse story line. They did. They did. They did tell the apocalypse storyline from the comic books, but the emotional factor was wasn't there. Of like X Men Apocalypse, I would give like six point five out of ten. This Dark Phoenix, which I was totally against, by the way, I couldn't. I didn't really want to watch it. Uh, it's like the third time they're telling the Dark Phoenix story, but it was a another world, other world Dark Phoenix story. I didn't know that, right? And I was went in there thinking oh man I can't believe they're telling another Dark Phoenix story but it had little minor changes that kept me entertained as well so this one I would I gave 8 out of 10 Apocalypse I gave 6.5 out of 10 right. and people laugh and call me paranoid when I say the movie movies is one of the main brainwashing tools for good oh but sticks man who, who laughs at you if they laugh at you they must watch a lot of Disney man entertainment industry is one of the main propaganda uh, corporate propagandas the programming you know the, as the saying goes why do you think they called it programming television programming right because they're programming people it's one of the main brainwashing tools that centralized power has I mean brainwashing is a loaded term implying you think the message is bad but yes movie movies communicate messages and morals all the time and that isn't a bad thing a mask of raven agreed not necessarily a bad thing however they're not being forthright with their programming it's all subliminal 
Okay, not all subliminal, there's a lot of forthright, but a lot of it is subliminal, and a lot of it is not good, bad, very, 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 very bad. History has proven that. I mean, look at all the war propaganda that we have in movies right now. Why is that war propaganda anything good? There's war propaganda coming out of almost every movie in Hollywood, or from Hollywood. Uh -huh. Brainwashing is always a bad thing, especially when kids are subject to it. Yeah. Like brainwashing implies that the person doesn't know they're being brain like programmed, right? So brainwashing implies that there's inherent plan to convince these people to do something that they're not aware of, right? Planting seeds. I do that myself, but it's not necessarily bad. I do it with my students regarding mathematics, but I'm really honest about it, right? I tell, I tell my students when we start talking about things, I go, listen, what we're doing, talking about right now, you're not going to see for three years, but I'm planting seeds, right? I'm programming you. I'm getting you laying down the foundation so you understand future concepts, right? What's your definition of brainwashing? You might, dis might agree. Putting ideas that are not necessarily true into kids that are valuable, vulnerable to this type. Uh, one movie that covers this uh, is The Corporation. It's like a three hour documentary where they interview corp uh, CEOs, where they talk about saying, oh, you know, the product they sell is to teenage girls, but they start advertising to those girls when they're like toddlers, like four, five, six years old, that's when they're hitting up, hitting them up with the advertisement to sell them products when they're 15, right? The Pentagon is more than willing to lend equipment if they get final treatment of the script so the film casts the U.S. military in a positive light, yeah. And they, they give access to warships, planes, helicopters, military hardware, um, equipment, yeah, and funding right and it's just it's not only movies it's also gaming it's also books everything education right? kids have not developed the logical thinking yet. you're very interested in comics do you ever uh, try to write your story do a really uh, do you already have one uh, barbarian I in the past I did think about it but I got into publishing so I published other people's comic books right their stories because I had to, at the time I had the financing, uh, so I decided instead of trying to create my own comic books, I'd act as a node and provide the funding where people could uh, publish their books. And I, 15, 15 comic books I've published, 15, 16 comic books I've published. Which is why films like Platoon and Apocalypse Now were so expensive to make. Yeah. Actually, uh, Francis Ford Coppola, I think it was Coppola, um, for was it Apocalypse Now? He didn't get funding from the Pentagon. They wanted him. Uh, I think the Pentagon uh, military industrial complex wanted uh, access to the script and he denied it to him. Or was it Platoon? Was it Platoon? I, I remember an interview with him where in one of the scenes, it was Platoon, in one of the scenes where uh, uh, where there's a spider here crawling up. Should I show you the spider? Let's see. Oh, on my computer. Come on. <laughs> Blow it off. Oh, sorry. That would have been loud to you guys. Oh, my God. Look at what I did. <laughs> Don't play with the spiders. <laughs> um, where are we? Anyway, there's a scene in Platoon where the guy gets shot in the back. Uh, France, uh, what do you call it? The Willem Dafoe, where he kneels down on the ground. It felt like ASMR was good. Oh, was it? Okay, cool. When he kneels down on the ground, they were supposed to, have, supposed to have explosions going off in his chest, and the explosions didn't go off. He was supposed to be blood spattering, uh, but they couldn't afford to reshoot it. The last Godzilla from 2012 felt like a Navy commercial, <laughs> but an example you provided from Godzilla was pretty forthright about the message. I think that the brainwashing does exist to a degree but people use the term when it doesn't apply and they just uh, disagree Ooh, windy, windy. disagree with a very obvious and overt message 
you're a comic book publisher. First time I hear this, surprise. Are you still having interest in publishing comics? At some point, maybe. I would, I would love to get back into it. Really, I would. But I need funds. And I'm publishing right now the content that we're creating. So uh, once this stabilizes, I get some mathematics stuff out there, uh, I might look into publishing comic books again. If you want to know uh, what comic books I publish, I have a few of them listed on uh, my eBay page right now. And it's Chicho, I don't have the link here. Let me grab the link for you. Uh, basically, if you go to uh, Mermaid Publications was my company. Okay. So, hold on a second. Here, I'll show you the books that I'm selling right now. And if you scroll down, you'll see, you'll see a list of the books. Anything with mermaid publications I published, and that's a handful of them. That's about half of them. There's more. A little bit less than half, maybe. Oh, some ASMR. Nice. Luna, Lina. How are you doing? It does uh, exist to all degrees. You're subject to brainwashing every day. Start the TV, open the newspaper, walk in your streets, right? Billboards subliminal messages all over the place all over the place there are cities out there that have banned billboards right i think i think rio de janeiro is one of them if i'm not mistaken it feels like disney these days has a product for every stage of a person's life yes 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 okay but such a broad definition of brainwashing could apply to anything for example what would a TV program or a newspaper that doesn't brainwash look like to you? Brainwashing is always brainwashing. Thanks for the info. I'll check it out. Okay. There's, uh, there's some good books there. I'm proud of. And this is emphatically not a defense of news channels or papers. I hate lots of them too. Yeah. Oh, we got yard work coming close to us. No! No, the yard work, the yard work, the yard work. Fun. More straw. Oh, I finished my strawberries. I finished all the strawberries. Raspberries. I hope you guys are having good snacks, by the way. What? Catat? Oh, hey, catat. The potato cat. How are you doing? I haven't seen you in a while. Raspberries, raspberries. Squishy raspberries. Eat some fruit. Eating ASMR. Some Koreans. Oh man. I would love to eat some bibimbap right now. Bibimbap or kalbi or bul bulgogi. Bulgogi. Aslam alaikum. Aslam alaikum. Something is not working. What's not working, Barbarian? Oh, the link is not working? Oh, here. Let me. Here, I'm going to link you one of the books I published. And then you can find the name from there. Here, I'll give you this one. Hopefully this one comes up. Fine. This link works. Is that going to work? I don't know. Let me see if I kill off the end stuff. Oh, here. Let me kill off this part. This should grab it. Yeah, this should grab it. Yeah, this this one. This one should do it. Your stream is quiet. Or just me. It might be quiet. I'm outside so I haven't really kicked up the the sound. Greta Thorag. The client of Athmus from Sweden is another example of brainwashing. She's claimed to be the one who came up with the idea to skip school for the climate movement.
but actually it was a billionaire named Bo Thorin that is guiding Greta herself, himself, and through a PR company. Yeah, there's a lot of centralization through her movement. There's brainwashing, it's control, herd mentality. Right? It doesn't mean what she's saying is incorrect necessarily. The question is, where is that uh, energy going, and who is going to profit from it? Doing all right. Cat at the potato cat says, "Wow, that place looks so nice to hang out." Yeah, it's really nice. Uh, when there's yard people, people doing yard work and stuff, it's sort of a pain in the ass because there's a lot of manicured yards here. But when the uh, lawnmowers and stuff is not going, is fantastic. Brainwashing other young kids to follow her steps by making it cool to skip school because of the climate which isn't a bad idea not necessarily right depending on what school you're in right there's some garbage schools out there your time is better spent doing other things i think that media should attempt to do is uh, present a pretty good variety of facts and ideas and ask questions on of the consumer as well as su uh, suggest a point they're trying to make masquerade i agree with you there should be more discourse but a lot of mainstream uh, corporate news eliminated a lot of discourse a long time ago okay i want to allow twin things comment i'm not sure what was in there government uh, i guess didn't like that word think Have you guys seen that older Adam Curtis documentary, Century? Oh yeah, fantastic. What a great documentary, eh? It's about the birth of the PR industry. Yeah, fantastic. As a finance guru that has uh, transcended to the fourth dimension, this makes me cringe. <laughs> if, you got, if you got your degree as a finance major, that's cringeworthy, that's for sure. The economics that they teach at university is pretty damn scary, man pretty damn scary yeah just say we are subject to different kinds of brainwashing every day but brainwashing will always bring brainwashing oh I can relate to the annoyance of the gardening work I wish the city would finally switch to electric tools should be a bit quieter yeah should be I hope so I one of our family members started a gardening company that's only using electric tools and they're getting business up the yin yang right He's expanding and stuff like this. He's been making way more money than he thought he was going to make. It blew him away, he bought out his partner, right? So if you want to start a business, all electric gardening tool company business, where you're taking care of people's lawns and stuff like this with electric tools, quiet. Man, get in the market now, get electric cars, electric trucks, and just pitch that environmentally friendly gardening uh, angle. Boop. That's that's a good business model do you think that theoretically the UK can be more economically viable without the EU uh, since trade regulations obviously it'll never happen in reality as the government will cock it of course I think the UK will be more prosperous outside of the EU than it is in the EU okay but if that's your idea of brainwashing then any kind of cultural or social influence uh, would also bring brainwashing. I said another word. <laughs> yeah, I think penis rupert Didn't know chat was so sensitive. It's the the automated autom automation on it, right? I said another word for that. That it's a negative term that is uh, meaningless unless well defined and uh, applied properly. It's a lot of it's a lot, like a lot of isms, I guess. How do you control the? growing population of 7.7 .7 billion people without brainwashing with violence we've tried that and it didn't work how about education right improving their living standard that works education works right uh, providing them with uh, sustainable housing food uh, health care that works really that works right and I think population should be a personal decision. X. It shouldn't be centralized. 
I know it is centralized right now, but I don't agree with centralization personally. I don't know how others feel about it. That's a giant question with a lot of baked in assumptions, yeah. We've forgotten all about Julian Assange who is rotting in a British prison. I as I agree with you. This is however economic uh, personal finance video. But what's happening to Julian Assange affects us as well on a personal finance level. And it, we didn't talk about Julian Assange a couple of days ago when we talked about politics. I don't think so anyway. And that's one of the biggest things that's happening in the world that we should all be paying attention to. IS, thanks for bringing it up, right? And uh, Roger Waters did, uh, uh, sang one of his songs. There was a demonstration 24, uh, 12 hours ago or so today anyway in front of where he's being held, the prison and uh, John Pilger spoke and I listened to John Pilger's speech or it was yesterday uh, Roger Waters did a song on there and numerous people have spoken there uh, very 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 important education makes people ask more questions why do you think the public school system is set up the way it is we are learning repetitive why preparing for work life what do you do in work repetitive work um, I agree that public school system is completely collapsed. Public school system is bleeding bad. Bleeding bad is garbage. Uh, same with a lot of private school systems. They're garbage as well. Right? The difference between education and brainwashing is important and needs to be nuanced, which is why we can't run around calling things brainwashing. Mask of Raven, our current centralized education system in Canada and the United States is indoctrination. Should we call indoctrination brainwashing? Possibly, for certain situations. Should we call it education? For certain things. They teach, they're supposed to anyway. They're supposed to teach people how to read and write and do mathematics. So that's education. Could you learn that a lot faster outside of the centralized indoctrination center? 100%. What takes someone, uh, you know, five years to learn, maybe in regards to languages or mathematics, you could probably learn in a year if you do it right outside of that centralized education indoctrination center in most western countries and i agree with the last message but what was the last message public system is bullying bad yeah i often think about how i would do things differently if in a position of power if i would do some of the same things statecraft and social engineering and whatnot i feel like a large part of the job would be holding on to existing power 100 108 dragons uh, here's the thing right for me because i have like you know some people know that i have a youtube channel and stuff like this and they go oh wow you have a lot of subscribers I go, it's okay right uh it's gonna grow i'm gonna plan on growing and stuff like this and there's a certain amount of power responsibility that has come with that right and for me, the content I'm putting out is to, if you want to use the term loosely, brainwash, right? Direct society in the way I think it should be going, right? So 100% agree with you, 108 Dragons, that if you're in a position of power, then why not try to have more of what you love in your life? Why not support things that you use, right? Maybe just through consuming, buying, maybe through funding, right? Maybe through interacting, maybe through creating, right? Your own business, supporting cooperatives, shopping local, whatever it is, right? Or if you want centralization, start funding centralized institutions, right? So every human being, whatever they are doing, they try to live their lives in a way which is reflecting their lives. We have no choice. That's sort of in the program right that's part of what happens okay. if you're educating kids certain things to support your own ideology you're definitely brainwashing them yeah and that's the book we did a reading of krishnamurti's education and the significance of life right so krishnamurti's education and the significance of life if you do chicho education and the significance of life you'll find a video link and there's a link in the description of that video that takes you to the online book where you can read it and one of his thesis that he has in this very short book a must read book for all of humanity really as far as i'm concerned right is that basically what's happening with our education system right now with teachers with centralization of power they're not 
um, operating as vessels, as helpers, as stewards for individuals that have come into this existence to help them find out who they are and for them to grow they are they are taking we are taking these entities these human beings and instilling programs in them and brainwashing them indoctrinating them into the philosophy of centralized institutions or individual teachers and he basically states that the reason that this is happening is because we don't have love right love is missing from education because we do not love our children because what parent would put their children into this kind of system the only type of parent that is already that is a product of the system because they don't know that this is the ultimate purpose of the system right school is a big thing in a young brain it teaches you more stuff than your parents you need eight hours a day in school five days a week for most of the next 12 years or so <laughs> you got the, you need to have a sarcasm face there uh, skits are around them really because i don't think we do that's definite fun gang that's a two-hour stream nice that was fun i think i'm gonna call it gang I've got lawn work going on there and I want to go blackberry picking I'm gonna put on some long sleeves maybe and go blackberry picking put on my put on my summer hat put on my summer hat and go blackberry picking yeah. John Taylor Gatto is the best phenomenal about that a lot his claim is that the current system is very successful but only for those at the top yeah our current system is designed to be this way and John Taylor Gatto phenomenal his philosophy is one of the main core philosophies I use for my teaching as well as Krishnamurti's education and significance of life school needs a lot of changes Chicho for no not Chicho for president I have no desire to go into that cesspool hopefully there won't be such a need for a president in the future of humanity thanks for being here gang uh, I'm gonna call a stream and then tomorrow from 2 till 4 uh, we're gonna do mathematics inside okay I hope you can make it thank you for being here thank you for the discussion thank you for all the content and all the information I hope you have a fantastic fantastic day bye for now